Now let's define our sixth trigonometric function in terms of our right triangle geometry. Here we have a right triangle. One angle is labeled theta. The angle across from theta is known as the opposite. The smaller side touching this angle is known as the adjacent. And the upper hypotenuse is the side opposite the right triangle. Right angle. Our sixth trigonometric function is defined in terms of all three sides. The sine is defined as the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine is defined as the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And tan theta is sine theta divided by cosine theta, which simplifies to give us the opposite over the adjacent side. Cosecant theta is still the inverse of sine, so it's 1 over sine, which makes it the hypotenuse over the opposite. Secant theta is still the inverse of cosine, which makes it 1 over cosine theta or the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Cotan theta is cosine theta over sine theta or the inverse of tan theta, which makes this the adjacent over the opposite. Now let's look at an example of finding a six trigonometric function given a right triangle. Here, we're given a right triangle with hypotenuse 13. The opposite side is 5, which is across from theta. Using our Pythagorean theorem, we know that a squared, or the adjacent, is equal to the hypotenuse squared minus the opposite squared. Therefore, a is equal to 12. If a is equal to 12, then we should be able to find all six trigonometric functions. We know sine of theta is equal to the opposite of the hypotenuse, so sine of theta is equal to 5 over 13. Cosine of theta is the adjacent over hypotenuse, so this would be 12 over 13. Tan theta is equal to sine over cosine, or opposite over adjacent, so this is 5 over 12. Cosecant theta is the inverse of sine, so this would be 13 over 5. Secant theta is the inverse of cosine, so this is 13 over 12. And cotan theta is the inverse of tan theta, so this becomes 12 over 5. So here we have our sixth trigonometric function given two sides of a right triangle. Here's another example of finding the sixth trigonometric function of a right triangle. This time we're given the information that secant theta is equal to 3 over 2. We know secant is the inverse of cosine, and since cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, secant is therefore hypotenuse over adjacent. We can use this information to sketch a right triangle, so our hypotenuse is 3 and our adjacent is 2. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we know that the opposite side will be equal to the hypotenuse squared minus the adjacent squared. So the opposite becomes the square root of 5. Now that we have the length of all three sides, we can find the remaining trig functions. Sine theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, so this becomes radical 5 over 3. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, or the inverse of this, so this becomes 2 over 3. Tan theta is opposite over adjacent, so this is radical 5 over 2. Cosecant theta is the inverse of this, so this becomes 3 over radical 5. Rationalizing our denominator, we multiply by radical 5, so this becomes 3 radical 5 over 5. Cotan is inverse of tan, which is 2 over radical 5. Once again, we rationalize the denominator. Multiply the top and the bottom by radical 5. This becomes 2 radical 5 all over 5. So here we have the other 5 trig functions. Now we'll look at co-function identities. We know that the sine of 30 degrees, and 30 degrees is the same thing as pi over 6. The sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. We also know that cosine of 60, and 60 is the same thing as pi over 3, is 1 half. 
So here we can see that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 half and cosine of 60 degrees is equal to 1 half. These are complementary angles since they add to 90 degrees. From this we can realize that, that co-functions of complementary angles are equal. So the sine of 30 is equal to the cosine of 60 or the cosine of 60 is equal to 30. This is true for other trig functions. In summarizing this, here we have sine of 90 minus theta is equal to the cosine of theta. So if theta is equal to 30, then the sine of 90 minus 30, which is 60, is equal to cosine of 30. Similarly, cosine of 90 minus theta is equal to sine theta, and tan 90 minus theta is equal to cotan theta. And the cotan of 90 minus theta is equal to tan theta. And finally, we have secant of 90 degrees minus theta is equal to the cosecant of theta. And the cosecant of 90 minus theta is equal to secant theta. Now, all these measurements are in degrees. But we could just as easily have replaced 90 with pi over 2. So the sine of pi over 2 minus theta in radians be equal to the cosine of theta in radians or the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta in radians be equal to the sine of theta in radians and for everything else. Now let's use our call function identities to evaluate some trig functions. Here we're given that sine of 60 degrees is equal to the square root of 3 over 2 and the cosine of 60 degrees is equal to 1 half. Now we'll be required to find sine of 30 cosine of 30, tangent of 60, and cotan of 60. We know cosine of 60 is equal to 1 half using our co-function identity here, where we know that cosine of 60 would be equal to the sine of 90 minus 60 is equal to sine of 30. So cosine of 60 is the same thing as the sine of 30. So the sine of 30 is equal to 1 half. Similarly, the cosine of 30 would be equal to the sine of 60. So cosine of 30 would be equal to square root of 3 over 2. We know that tan theta is equal to sine over cosine. So trying to find the tan of 60, so that would be the sine of 60 over the cosine of 60. So here we have square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half which reduced to give us the square root of 3. So tan of 60 is equal to the square root of 3. Cotan of 60 is the inverse of the tan of 60. So this is equal to 1 over radical 3. Rationalizing our denominator, this becomes radical 3 over 3. Here we have three additional identities. These are called the Pythagorean identities. The first one is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. The second one is 1 plus tan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. And the third one is 1 plus cotan squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. You will have to remember all these identities along with the ones we looked at before. Because throughout the semester, we'll be using these over and over again. In these two examples, we're going to use these three identities to prove that the left side of the equation is equal to the right side. In this problem here, we're going to use a distributive property. So that becomes 1. 1 times negative cosine theta would be negative cosine theta. Cosine theta times 1 would be positive cosine theta. And cosine theta times negative would be negative cosine squared theta. And this is all equal to sine squared theta on the right. Here, these two are eliminated and we're left with 1 minus cosine squared theta. And here is our proof. This side is equal to this side. And we get this from here. If we subtract cosine from both sides, we see that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta. In this example, we can divide both the numerators by tan beta. So we have tan beta 
over tan beta plus cotan beta over tan beta. This reduces to 1. So this becomes 1 times cotan beta. And this is 1 over tan beta, which makes it again times cotan beta. So this becomes 1 plus cotan beta squared, cosecant squared beta. And as you can see, this is the equivalent of this identity. 1 plus cotan squared beta is equal to cosecant squared beta. Now let's look at using our identities and our knowledge of the unit circle to find the unknown side of a right triangle. Here we're given an angle of 30 degrees and the opposite side of 30 and we're asked to find the adjacent. We know that the tan of 30 from our identities is equal to the sine of 30 over cosine of 30. We know from our unit circle that the sine of 30 is equal to 1 half and the cosine of 30 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. Dividing 1 half by the square root of 3 over 2 we get tan of 30 is equal to square root of 3 over 3. From our triangle, we know that tan of 30 is also equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So, tan of 30 is equal to 30 over x. We just established that the tan of 30 is equal to the square root of 3 over 3. So, now we have the square root of 3 over 3 is equal to 30 over x. If we take our cross product, we have x radical 3 is equal to 90. Dividing both sides by radical 3, we get x is equal to 90 over radical 3. Rationalizing our denominator, we have x is equal to 90 radical 3 over 3, which gives us x is equal to 30 radical 3. So the length of x is equal to 30 times the square root of 3. Now let's get a sword scenario. It says we're skiing down a mountain with a vertical height of 1500 feet. The distance from the top of the mountain to the base is 3000 feet. What is the angle of elevation from the base to the top of the mountain? Now if we draw this picture, we have a mountain, this is the top, the vertical distance is 1,500 feet. The distance from the top to the base is 3,000 feet. So here we have our right triangle. We're asked to find the angle of elevation. Here we're trying to find theta. In this problem, we're given the opposite side and the hypotenuse. We know that sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, so this is 1500 over 3000. If we reduce this, we get sine theta is equal to 1 half. We know from our unit circle that <coughs> sine of 30 degrees is 1 half or pi over 6. Therefore, theta is equal to 30 degrees or pi over 6 rads.